friends. It's been a little while. I keep getting distracted and I'm not sharing as much with you as I used to do, but i try to remedy that. I thought I would um, start a series following a cold wax painting from beginning to end. I've done a lot of cold wax painting over the last couple of years and I started out doing mostly kind of intuitive abstracts. If you look at my playlist for cold wax, you'll see mostly abstracts or all abstracts really because I haven't done any portrait paintings in cold wax for YouTube, but I've been doing a lot of them and really enjoying it. So I thought that's what I would do this series with. I recently took a class with Marina Tedding van Berkholt. Um, if you don't know her work, she does beautiful portraits in cold wax and oils. And so she has several classes, which I will link her website in the description box so that you can go and check it out if you are interested in learning. This is a technique that I learned from her and it just totally changed the way that I work with cold wax and oils. So just as a little refresher, if you're not familiar with cold wax painting, um, several manufacturers make the cold wax. This is not an encaustic wax. Um, it can't be heated. It will catch on fire. <laughs> so you don't want to do that. Hence the name cold wax, but it, you mix it with your oil paint and you can achieve all kinds of really great textures. It's a totally different way to work with oil paints. Um, I'm not an oil painter per se, but the oils with the cold wax, um, just, it makes me happy. So this is a small container of the Gamblin cold wax medium. It looks basically like Crisco. Let me turn it the right way here. It looks like Crisco, but it's, you know, it doesn't have a smell or anything. There's no, um, you know, bad smell like sometimes you get with oil painting mediums. And I work with a variety of different brands of oil paint. This have a few of these smaller tubes. It's um, Marie's Water Mixable Oils. So these oils, if you don't like working with oil paints because of the solvents or the cleanup, the water mixables can be cleaned up with soap and water. Um, but I don't personally find an is issue with the smell of regular oils or cleanup. I use, um, for my tools, I use isopropyl alcohol to clean them off. For my brushes, um, I rinse them in alcohol and then I clean them the rest of the way with baby oil and it works just fine. I haven't ever had a problem. So um, just basic supplies. You can use like the Neocolor crayons. You can use those with this technique. Um, the RNF pigment sticks, which is basically just pigment in a oil paint in a stick form. Just, you know, there's a lot of, you can add sand. Anyways, palette knives for this technique are indispensable. I can't, you can't work, I can't work without palette knife. Um, a bowl scraper, such as this one. I have several, uh, well used as you can tell. It's got a very fine, flexible edge. Great for spreading the paint, like in the background and whatnot. Um, I sometimes work on Arches oil paper. You can get it in all different sizes. This happens to be a 12 by 16 size. It is very similar to watercolor paper. It's heavy and this one is very textured. I don't know if it comes in a smooth finish or not. I like the textured finish. So sometimes, yeah, this one's cold press. There may be hot press as well. Um, but my favorite substrate for the oil and cold wax is a cradled panel. Like this one, it's a birch panel. 
built on a cradle board. Generally, it's not advisable to work cold wax and oil on canvas because um, canvas is flexible. So as the oil and cold wax dries, it runs the risk of cracking if the canvas is flexed. So generally you won't find cold wax and oils on canvas. I have done some on canvas, but only with very, very thin layers of oil and cold wax to try to avoid cracking or some. You can incorporate collage, you can stencil. There's a lot of cool things that you can do with the oil and cold wax. So I'm going to get my supplies ready. Be right back. Okay. Um, I just thought I would show you getting ahead of myself a little bit, but I chose this image and I'll show you how to transfer that in a little bit. Um, it's from unsplash.com. You can find lots of cool reference photos there of all kinds of things and they're free to download. So this was the photo, but um, for my reference, I like to turn it to black and white because it's much easier to see the lights and shadows on a black and white photo. So basically just once you find your photo, go to edit and then go to your filters. This is an iPhone, sure, go to your filters. And then you can go all the way down to the bottom and choose, whoops, choose one of the black and white images. And then just print it out. This regular printer size works okay for this panel, I think. I might make her a little bit smaller because I like to see some of the background and I may choose to do some stenciling or some other things, you know, around her. So before we get to that portion, I might just make her a little bit smaller. But at this stage, what we need to do is get um, a gesso background on here. I have just some regular sand. I like to add sand to my gesso because I like a lot of texture on my background. Once it's dry, which will take probably overnight or maybe a little longer depending on how um, thick a layer of cold wax I put on um, to start getting some texture built up. But the first step is just to apply some gesso. I have just some Liquitex gesso. If I can open it, there we go. And I'm just going to get a fairly generous amount on there. And grab a big brush. Have some water over to my right. So I'm just going to wet my brush just because it'll help the gesso move. And I'm just going to start spreading it out to begin with. And then I'm just going to take a pinch of sand and kind of hold it up. Maybe, I don't know, 9 inches, 12 inches, just so I get kind of an even distribution. You can put as much or as little as you want. You can also use calcium carbonate, which is also called marble dust. Um, this <laughs> just realized the step that I skipped that I always do, it's been a little while since I did one, um, is to tape off the sides of this cradled panel so I don't get this layer on the sides because I'll want to paint it, but it, it's fine. It can be sanded off. We'll just carry on. But I'm just trying to incorporate the sand into the gesso Brush marks do not matter. Um, you're going for texture. I'm going for texture. You don't have to put the sand in. You can just you can put a smooth layer of gesso. It's all up to you. Whatever look you like, whatever you're going for. But if you, I almost dip my brush in the sand bucket. 
you know, if you like a lot of texture, and you'll see as we go what the texture does for the background, for the painting in general. I can get this, I mean, this will dry fairly quickly, and I can get the first layer of the background on. I usually do two or three layers in my for my background. Now I could stop there. I could, you know, um, press into this if I wanted to with any number of tools to create even more depth and texture. What do I have here handy? I just have a piece of cheesecloth. It's got wax on it, but that's all right. But if I wanted to just lift up some peaks here and there. You could also do this with crumpled paper or um, saran wrap works well. This is working pretty good. It's gonna clog up my cheesecloth, but that's okay. I got plenty. Or if you wanna just leave the brush marks, it's all up to you, your creative process, what you like. This is just to give you an example of what you can do. It's pretty addictive. There, I like that a lot. That created a lot of really great texture. So this will take, I'll probably wait overnight before I start on the background layer of the cold wax. I'll pick this up so you can maybe see the texture a little bit better. And so, if I wanted to start with a color on the background, the acrylic um, bottom layer, prep layer, I could have added acrylic paint to this gesso and, and done the same thing. It would just have a color to it. But because I'm not sure my, of my color palette at this point, I just went for the white. It doesn't really matter, but that option you know, is okay. Once you put wax on it, you can't go back to acrylics. You can't put the acrylics over the oil. So any acrylic material that you want on your panel or on your substrate, do it before you start the wax layers. Because once you start the wax, then you're done with acrylics or any water-based medium. That, that will not fly. So we'll wait for this to dry and then I'll come back and we will get the background layers of wax on and that will be phase one. And then we'll go into getting the, the um, image transferred, which I'll explain more in the next video. But I mean, if you're confident in your drawing skills and you wanna just freehand draw your subject on, you certainly will be able to do that as well. Um, there's a couple of different methods that I use when I do portraits and we'll talk more about that in the next video. Um, but we'll carry on with this prep video as soon as this layer is dry. Okay, this dried overnight. It's got a lot of texture as you can hear. Maybe you can see the sand just created just a ton of texture. So I'm going to show you my palette and mixing, but first um, I'm just going to kind of activate the surface a little bit. Um, I'm just going to take a Neo color. And probably 99% of this will be covered up, but I just like to start with a little bit of mark making, just kind of warm up, get things going a little bit. Um, I think I will have a charcoal pencil somewhere. Okay, this is just a can't see that the light behind it, but this is a soft charcoal pencil. Okay, so 
now we're not faced with a total blank white canvas, if you will, substrate. I'm going to move this for a minute so that I can bring my palette into the picture. I have uh, Water Mixable Oil by Lucas. It is Cinnabar Green Lightest. Okay. Um, another Water Mixable by Lucas. This is Cerulean Blue. A bleached, unbleached titanium, warm white. Light's a little weird in here today. Um, and another water mixable, Payne's Gray by Windsor and Newton. So that's what I have here on my palette. These are my original piles and then um, my cold wax. So what I've already done is mixed piles of color and wax 50-50 into these piles. Now what I'll do is mix some of the mixed warm white with each of my colors. And this is the Payne's Gray rather than black. So I will do the same thing. I'll move my wax down a little bit. I'll pick up in a little bit less of the black of the dark with my color. So I've got my original color mixed with wax and then that mixed with the titanium white and with the Payne's Gray. And I'll mix some of the Payne's Gray with the Titanium White to get a lighter shade of that. A little bit lighter. And then I want to mix these two colors together. Okay, then I want to mix some of this mix with a lighter color. And this mix with a lighter color. So by doing it this way, I have an entire palette of colors that I know will harmonize and look good together with only starting with the four tubes of paint. And at some point this will get used up and I'll have to remix and it doesn't have to be like exactly the same 
exactly the same color as what the mix was to begin with. It'll be pretty close. So that's how I start. Keep my tubes over here so I don't have to dig for them again. Oops. Okay, I'll bring this back in here. And actually what I want to do is I'm gonna mix up a bigger pile. Tear this off. I'm gonna mix up a bigger amount of my two main colors, the cerulean blue and the um, cinnabar green lightest just to get an overall first layer and then I'll come in with the palette knife and the colors I just mixed up. So I'm gonna stop and mix those up right now. Okay, I have some bigger piles mixed up that I can use to pull from to do the intermixing again without having to stop and get the tube and everything. But I'm gonna start with the bowl scraper. This is a Messermeister, my favorite brand of bowl scraper. And I'm just going to pick some up on the side of the scraper like that and just start pulling it onto my board. And because of the sand and the gesso, it will suck it up pretty fast. So. Just spread it as much as it wants to spread. It'll go on thicker in some areas and thinner in others. And then I'll pick up some of my blue, let it intermix. And if you don't have the sand, your paint will go a lot farther because it won't get sucked up as fast. It'll go on really like smooth and move across the surface a lot more than this is. And just keep in mind at this stage you're just creating a background for your focal point this doesn't have to be a work of art unto itself I mean it can be but you're going to cover this up with many many more layers of wax well several more layers of wax or you can make it do it as many you know make it as many layers as you want that's the beauty about this. You can just keep going and going and going. I'm just gonna scrape up everything that's left on here and find some light spots to fill in. And that's a pretty thin layer and you can still see like the marks that I made some of them
Now I can take my bowl scraper and make marks. That again will most likely be covered up. And you can see like where there's more sand, I'm going to make less marks because it's pretty much already soaked up the paint. And then just go over it with the bowl scraper in a couple directions and you can just, you know, push them back into the background a little bit more so they're not so prominent. So this is where I would leave this one right now. This is going to take overnight. I mean, when you touch it, you can tell. Um, but in order to get a successful second layer of color on here, this has to be pretty dry. So, you know, I could come back in with my palette knife. I know it's really noisy because of all the sand. But I can scrape back a little bit here and there if I want to. Now, the process is exactly the same if you don't use the sand, except that you'll use less paint and your paint will move and intermix a lot more um, on these first layers because it's not getting sucked up by the sand. But I think, A, I like the texture that I get from the sand and each layer that builds up the sand is, it's stuck in the back. It's not coming forward. So each wax layer that goes on kind of covers it up some more. But I can scrape those layers back to this layer and not really go through all the way to the white as much as if I hadn't used the sand. So there's, there's pros and cons. Um, you'll get good texture, but not as solid. Um, if you use calcium carbonate because it's more of a powder so it'll give you granules and clumps of texture that you can spread out but it won't be hard texture like the sand creates so you know if you if you do this try it both ways use whatever you have on hand or don't use anything at all eventually the wax layers will provide texture as well of course depending on the thinness and thickness that you put on and, you know, the amount of time that it hardens in between layers. So, until this dries, maybe as thin as it is, maybe by, you know, late afternoon, it's, I don't know, 10 o'clock in the morning here right now. So, you know, maybe by four or five o'clock, I'll be able to go on top of this because it's very thin. It should dry pretty quick. So that's it for now. I lift this up so you can see a little bit better. I have a window in front of me. So that's where the light's coming from. But you can see the texture still. So that's a start. And then the rest of this first video will be just, you know, building up the background layers. So I'll be back when this is dry. Okay, this didn't take a real long time to dry because it was so thin. I can still pick some up on my hands, but at this point, um, that's just because of the peaks and valleys from the sand. I could wait a little bit longer, I suppose, but at this point, I think I'm just going to go ahead and what do I do with my bowl scraper? There it is. <clears throat> So I'm going to just go again. And I can already tell that the paint is moving easier now with the second layer than it did on the first layer because of the sand. So I'm just, and there's no set way to do this as far as what colors you pick up or where you put them. It's just intuition at this point, what you think will look good. If you do something you don't like, just remember that these are your initial layers and they're going to get covered up. It just provides a background for you to begin on. 
So, just have fun and move the paint around. I'm just gonna keep going here. Saw me do this before. I'm just doing the same thing, just with the second layer here. And some more intermixed colors. So I'll just speed this up and fast forward some of it until this layer is done. I'm just about done. <clears throat> I'm loving this color combo. Just a couple of spots that I want to add a little more color into. Now as I go with more layers, these layers will be covered up. Some of these colors will shine through. And then I can always take various tools and on, you know, and subsequent layers are on and scrape back to these colors, which is always fun. All right, I'm gonna let this go because I don't want it to get too thick at this stage. So there we are. Let me get it in the light so it's not too much of a glare. But you can still see all the texture. The colors are all intermixing with one another and because of the way they were mixed together, um, you know, from the original four colors and then intermixing, everything goes together, all the colors. So I've used quite a bit of what I started with. This I will leave now overnight to dry. It should be dry enough for another layer um, tomorrow at the same time. So tomorrow we will continue with the next layer um, or I may just put another layer on. I'll do it exactly the way I just did it but with different colors. I, I'm starting this with cool colors underneath and then I'm going to use warmer colors on top. The next layer will be warmer colors. Um, so I may just go ahead and do that. I'll show you the color mixes and that I used just for the sake of time. Okay, coming back to add a warm layer to this. It's pretty dry. It's been quite a few hours, not overnight, but most of the day. I'm starting with Transparent White by Gamblin. I have the Cadmium Red Deep Hue by Winsor & Newton a raw sienna um, by lucas and a gamblin transparent orange so that's my warm palette i already mixed everything up here so these are my colors that i started with plus the white 
and this is my initial mix with the cold wax this is mixed these two are mixed with the white this one i mixed from the transparent orange and the cadmium red deep to get this then mix some of that with the white to get this little bit lighter color and then i just mixed a lighter version of the transparent orange or a mid-tone this is lighter this is more of a mid-tone so <clears throat> normally i um do this layer with a palette knife but since i have so much texture when i as i was mixing i was offloading my the excess from my knife and you can hear there's still a lot of sand i kind of went a little crazy with the sand so i'm going to start with the bowl scraper and i'm just going to start with like smaller bits of color here and there and then when i build up a little bit more um, of this layer i'll switch to the palette knife Okay, I think I'm going to stop here. I may come back with um, one more layer just to bring back some more of the blues and greens that I started with. But I'm just going to let it hang out here for a while and I'll look at it in a few hours or as I'm passing by to uh, see what I think looking at it through the camera lens. Um, I think it could stand to have the some of the cooler colors brought back a little bit. So it's a process. I mean, you just kind of keep going until you feel like that layer is done or you like it or, you know, whatever causes you to keep going or to stop. You can go and go and go and go layer after layer after layer. There's no rule as to how many or how few layers um you can use so it's all up to you everyone is different from the last one and you just feel your way through so that's it i know when you look at it you think oh my gosh she ruined that last because the last layer was pretty I, I have to admit i liked it but there's not nearly enough of a base of wax built up for me to start on a portrait so 
it's just kind of like I said kind of a process and I did want some warm colors in here but I can always come back and add another layer with the blues and greens and bring those forward a little bit more which is probably what I'll do next so stay tuned okay I'm just coming back really quickly to show you um, my final layer before I transfer um, my image for the portrait I went back in with the blue and green and some white and just did another layer on top of the warm layer that I did last that you saw me do I added a little bit of stenciling over here up here at the very top and down here in this corner it kind of blends in this one is the most dominant I'll show you the stencil I used it was this stencil so I just took my bowl scraper and scraped the paint through the stencil and just kept going back over it um, until I could see that there was paint on the board probably if I had used a lighter color I used the blue mostly the blue and a little bit of the green but a lighter color would have shown up more I can always add more later I know I keep saying it but that's part of the beauty of the cold wax and oil is that you can just keep building and building and adding and taking away just with more layers so um, this will sit now at least until tomorrow so another day of drying and then I'll be able to transfer the image this image that's it for this segment I hope you enjoyed watching this part stay tuned for the next part where we transfer the image and start painting the portrait thanks for watching give this video a thumbs up if you like what you see consider subscribing to my channel if you're not already a subscriber and hit that notification bell so that you know when I upload the next segment of videos. And in the meantime, go make some art. Bye!